AITA for refusing to help a friend who didn't invite me to their wedding? For about 11 years now, I've, 37M, been pretty close with, let's call him, John, 38M. We met at a job in my mid-twenties and were pretty regular company up until the pandemic, where our hanging out, including a circle of mutual friends, has taken a decline but isn't extinct. John and his partner, let's call her, Jane, 36F, have been together for about eight years now, engaged for a little under two years, both with a child from previous relationships, so they have taken trips with their kids near yearly, and I've been happy to help visit John's, now they're home and check on things, take care of their animals, etc. while they're gone. I've helped them out with other projects slash tasks over the years and most recently picked up Jane from the airport returning from a work trip and got her home this past winter during a snowstorm because my vehicle could handle it. Generally, I have been present and helpful on top of our base friendship. About five weeks ago, I find out from a mutual friend their wedding is coming up, and invites went out a while ago, everyone in our circle but me invited. As a gay guy, I've experienced being iced out of some of my straight friends' lives and events in ways minor and pronounced, but this one has definitely been something that has had me thinking about my time and energy with people. I decided I would take the hint and begin to distance myself. Three days ago, John texts me asking if I am around in early to mid-August. I say I am. John asks if I wouldn't mind visiting like I have before to look after the animals and property. I said, sorry, I can't. He calls to talk about it. We run through the same conversation, polite but a bit tense, so I finally say, I just won't be visiting your home. After a moment of silence, I bring up that I'm disappointed that I appear to be the only person in our group of friends not invited to his wedding, and that I can't be helping like I have before if I'm just a background friend at this point. I wrap up the call positively and sincerely with me wishing them a good wedding and trip, and that maybe we can grab drinks soon. Jane reaches out two days ago sending follow-up texts saying John is upset about what I said and with her because she made the final calls about friend invites, and that I am taking this the wrong way, there is only so much capacity and that the others in our friend group have partners that took up space. She adds that she hopes I'll change my mind and help out them out because it would put John's mind at ease. I'm not entitled to the company of others or invitations to anybody's events, but am I wrong for setting my own boundaries in response to theirs? I try not to frame my friendships as transactional, but they obviously want something out of me here despite their not inviting me and then avoiding even bringing it up with me until they needed help with covering their honeymoon. Update, yesterday afternoon, a few days after John made the initiating contact that led to this altercation, he reached out by text telling me the following, I want to take you up on that drink tomorrow if possible, and I want to apologize for my royal fuck-ups in person. I agreed to meet. After we kicked off with a round of shots John's first line was that he failed me as a friend in this situation. With non-family invites, Jane apparently seemed very preoccupied with a philosophy of e-couples over singles at the wedding, and he had previously voiced that he felt it was exclusionary and silly. But I guess Jane prioritized couples on the first round of friend invites and told John that it will be easier to fit in others after receiving RSVPs. John backed out and says he felt that going along with her initial plan of inviting the rest of our circle, who are, God bless them, coupled up, and not me, and had faith the RSVP thing would materialize. She ended up using the bit of space to plug in some more family. John admitted he basically folded and felt ashamed enough that he could not find a way to tell me. He knew reaching out to me about that favor was a risk but took it anyways because he wanted someone he could trust, and my response was a materialization of everything he feared would happen, and in his words, deservedly so. He told me a wedding should be a gathering of your family and company who have been a part of your lives and who you want to be part of your lives, and I fit that bill to him by any measure. He, trying to accurately paraphrase, said I've done more than most of the people on the guest list for him and his family over their relationship, including help making memories with trip coverages and helping build their back deck with him to share meals and host events over the last six years. He got visibly upset when he said, with the shot and the drinks we were sipping on kicking in, that he can't believe Jane even considered holding my single-slash-dating status against me after I got her home safely during a snowstorm earlier this year, and that he did not more adamantly confront that bullshit reasoning the instant she voiced it. He is even more pissed for Jane reaching out to me in the manner she did after my original phone call with him. John acknowledged it would come off as hollow at this point, but after a few exchanges with Jane said there would be no more nonsense and I would at least get a proper invite and plus one if I wanted and they would make it work if it was even desired by me at this point. He said he is not going to try to do panic damage control but will be upfront with our circle, one has already dropped the wedding and I guess another couple has said something else, by his reporting, like he was with me for his faults. Because he and Jane deserve the blowback and he needs to earn trust back, if it's at all possible. He has also made it Jane's problem to find a friend who can come out nine days in a row to care for the home and pets. 
With a smirk, he said she's having a hard time securing it, and may likely have to hire help. I told John the first really appreciated his owning up to this, and it was good to see the friend I had shine through here. I told him that I have always appreciated him and Jane's friendship, so it hurt when I was excluded and not even addressed, I felt that close enough anyways, and I obviously don't mean to complicate his wedding, I've always thought him and Jane were great for each other, earnestly. I have supported them as best as I can, and I've been confused about what I have done or haven't done to be iced out. I also admitted it's hard to trust Jane again if she has been weighing the validity of my presence based on my relationship status, and added, with some humor, it's not like I haven't been trying and you guys haven't met some of my previous long-term partners. He said he doesn't get it either, and she has at least one good friend who is single that she may have burned a bridge with as well over the wedding philosophy she had. I said the friendship is going to be changed and informed by this, at least very different for a while, and I know that you and Jane had a disagreement leading to this but that I hope that the wedding goes on to be a good celebration. I informed him it feels best to take a pass on the invitation, but he said if there was a change of mind, up to the last minute, to let him know, which was kind and he wasn't desperate slash pushy about it. John said the fault is his for not stepping up on my behalf, that he is sorry, and while he feels, I wouldn't expect otherwise, and I agree, he is very lucky to have her in his life and thinks their marriage is a positive development for them. He even told her this whole situation will have him questioning and second-guessing her judgment on social matters with his friends for the foreseeable future. By his reporting, but a credit to their relationship, this was quite a blow to her to hear from him, but one she accepted and apologized for after their arguments about the subject. Before we parted ways in the parking lot, we gave each other a bro, hug, and John's voice broke a bit when he said he is sorry one last time, and I think mine did too when I forgave him. It was legitimately surprising and therapeutic to have John be so frank and accountable, but not unlike the friend I've known for most of my adult life. It was bittersweet, being all things considered a makeup, but also a breakup of sorts to what was previously an unquestioned and assumed strong trust and camaraderie. Maybe we can get there again. It seems possible, and it'd be nice. I'm sitting here after weeks of big feelings stewing on a different shade of big boy feelings now. Thanks for processing with me, Reddit. Story 2, AITA for having my wedding on a day my friend can't take off from work? My fiancé and I are throwing together a small wedding in our backyard that is set for six weeks from now. We've been engaged for over a year now and have a daughter so we figured it's time. We're not into the whole a production that some bigger weddings can become so we're trying to keep things extremely casual. As a result we've been texting and calling people to invite them in lieu of the more traditional paper invites. I texted a friend of mine with the date and time telling her that we would love to have her attend our little gathering if she could make it and her reply really sent me for a loop. She responded very upset that the wedding was so close and that she didn't have time to prepare for it. On top of that, I scheduled the wedding on a day that she works at the county fair. She then went on to say that my decision was rushed and I should be giving my guests as much time as possible to get ready for the wedding. I didn't want to make her feel bad about not being able to make it so I told her I understood it was a busy time for her and not to worry. She then replied saying I was being dismissive and questioning if we were truly friends because I didn't think to check the fair dates before setting the date for my wedding. She went on about how she wanted to be involved in the planning and that it felt like a slap in the face that she wasn't being involved. I responded by apologizing that I hadn't checked the dates because I thought that I knew them and then questioned why she couldn't take the day off if it was so important to her that she be there. Apparently she'd be fired if she did because she's the only cook available for the whole week of the fair. Six weeks isn't enough time to find someone to cover one shift. Okay, fair enough. She responds to my apology by saying that it's not a little mistake and that I should have asked her when she'd be available. She also asked why she hadn't been notified sooner. I've tried to tell her that it's just a small, casual affair and that my fiancé and I are the only ones involved in the planning. I've tried apologizing but she just doesn't want to hear it and at this point I'm pissed at her that she seems hell-bent on making my wedding about her and her needs. I have disengaged from the conversation but it's still haunting me so I need to know AITA.